Hello all. So Business Central 19 is available. So now it's time to do some learnings on Business Central 19. And we'll start with my setting up a Docker container. I know I have done it in the past, but I still get some questions around it. So I'm going to repeat it. I'm not going into complete basics, but you'll need Docker for sure. And Docker installed on your machine. And the next thing that you need is a BC container helper, which is a module which is released by Microsoft, managed by Freddy majorly. So what you can do once you are there and have Docker installed, open your PowerShell ISE as administrator and do a install module. Okay, so the name is BC container helper and then force it. Now this command will download uh, the BC Container Helper module from internet and will install it on my machine. Now, while this is happening, let's understand what this contains. This module contains command that helps us, the Dynamic Snap or the Central developers, to make their life easier with Docker's. So it gives you certain commands to create new Business Central Docker containers, uh, exporting files, importing files, installing fonts, licenses, and all those things in a container. It's not related to Docker. This module is specifically for Business Central containers. So don't install it. Once it is installed, you can check uh, that its status if you have to. So you can check uh, by using get module info. Oh, sorry get installed module or something yes installed module and then you can give it a name like this and mine is 2.0.16 which i just installed which is the latest one so i'll minimize this once this is done you need to open uh, the windows powershell not isc but a regular powershell like this and now you can use one of the commands from the BC container helper, which is new BC container wizard. Now, this is a set of steps which guides you or take you through to creating a business center container, which will open a separate uh, window. And the first thing is to accept the license. You can read about the details uh, when you do it. I might go a little bit faster. The first one is accepting license or agreement then it's where you want it I've zoomed this so you can't see it clearly but when you do it on your local you'll be able to see the title correctly but this is asking where you want the container I want it on my local you can also choose to be on as your VM then what kind of authentication you want to use you want to use a username password or is you know predefined username password let's say username password what is your container name? This is BC19 demo. Uh, Freddy have also added these uh, tips about naming everything. Like container names are case sensitive. So if you give the name where there are small and uh, big cases, then you need to make sure that they remain as it is. Which version you want? Now you can choose different versions which are available. Now you can either go with the latest builds of Sandbox or On-Prem or you can go with the Insider build. The only thing with the Insider build is you need to have an Insider token which is available from a uh, ready to go program only. Then if you are not want the latest one then you can choose which build you want. For the demo as we are talking about Business Central 19, we'll pick the A, I, I want a Docker container with sandbox, latest sandbox. You can pick other options also and based on different options there will be different questions like if you choose a specific build then it will require you to specify the exact version of the build that you want either on prem or sandbox and the same rules apply for dynamic snap <clears throat> if you are still using that. Once that is selected then it shows you which version is selected then it asks you for the country, the default is US, but you can choose others if you need it. 
they need test toolkit they have talked about it in the past it gives you capabilities to run test um, on the central they need a premium plan so if you don't understand in uh, SAS model there are two kind of plans essentials and premium uh, so you can choose that for the premium plan you need to have a license so I'll choose no so you want to create test users which are external account because you have chosen SAS these are the different kind of scenarios if you want to test I'll say no because that also needs a license do you have to modify the base app, which is a bad idea, but if you have to, you can choose yes, I'll choose no. It'll download the source code for you. A language extension. You don't need it because that is available on the Visual Studio Store. It's only valid if you're using a preview build or an insider build. So let's say no. License, as I said. Different option need license for this scenario. I don't need license. If you want, you can add the path over there. What kind of database you want? You want a database inside Docker? You want to restore the backup or you want to connect to an existing database on your local server? That's up to you. Uh, this one for me is A, which is inside the Docker container. You want it multi-tenant. If you have certain cases which will only be tested on a multi-tenant container, and choose multi-tenant what kind of domain name server you want to use I'll keep it default so that the docker can decide what is best for me do you want to use C, uh, SSL certificates if you don't then you can choose A otherwise you can choose the right options what kind of isolation I'll let docker decide it how much memory you need to give it to now there are details about it, uh, 4 GB is for demos and 8 GB is for dev and all. So read about it as you go through here and understand what you want. Do you want to save the image? Now this is a very important question. If you are going to create multiple containers uh, for the same version, then I would suggest to save the images. But if you are only creating it for one time and you're sure you'll not need it again, uh, the similar kind of container, then don't save the image. I already have this image saved, so I'm going to leave it blank. Otherwise, you can give it a name. And then you get this PowerShell script, which will be perfectly for your system, which can run, uh, <coughs> which can gen build your Docker container. You can give it a path. So let's say the right demo one dot one. That's it. The extension will be automatically added. As soon as you hint enter, the this file will get loaded into PowerShell ISE. If you see here's a pop-up. When I click here, you will see that the command, the similar command is here to create a Docker container with this name. With all the options that you have chosen, this is the command that's generated and you can just directly run it. It'll ask you for the username password because I have chosen an option to, you know, enter my username and password. Okay. And the command will start running and you can see the progress here as a logger builds in. Because I have the image saved, it will run a little bit faster than in your case. Because for the first time, it will have to download the image and, you know, then in my case, it will utilize the same image which I have already downloaded. So it found the image, I guess, and now it's trying to create a Docker container. Uh, container is ready. It started installing Business Central. So SQL Server, Service Tier. Um, Dependencies, Report Builder, PowerShell, Restore the Database, uh, Change the Compatibility Level of the Database, Adding Test, Starting the Business Central Service Tier, which is starting the service tier uh, for that environment. While this is happening, as we are talking about Business Central 19, also make sure that in your VS Code, um, go to your extension page and make sure that your AL language is updated.
If it is not, just check, you'll see an update icon here and you can update that extension to you know have support for Business Central 90. This is a version that's available as of today. You might find a higher version later. So while this is happening, let me tell you what's the plan uh, after this video. After this video, I'm going through all the changes that have been released with Business Central 90. And I'll be recording videos and those will not be the longer videos of 10, 15 or 30 minutes or so. They'll be shorter videos in a, I guess, in a time frame of uh, three to five minutes longer. And they all get, will get added in the YouTube channel. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, do subscribe it so that you keep on getting those notifications as I keep on adding those. As you can see, it started it's starting the service tier and I've changed certain settings on my configuration files and all and it's kind of ready to be used in a, in a minute or so. If you have any other you know topics which can be turned into a series of uh, videos do let me know in comments and I'll make sure that I you know I understand those and make some videos. There are some series which I have already planned and if you are subscribed you you'll see the notification as those videos get published so yeah starting tomorrow there will be more videos about what's changed in business Central 90 so keep an eye on those uh, there will there will be a separate playlist for all these videos okay so in the meantime let's quickly check what happens when we create a new an extension now while this is happening in the background. When I do a AL Go, you'll see 8.0, which is equivalent to Business Center 2021 release wave 2. That means that's the latest release at this point. And you will only get this option once you update your AL language uh, extension. Once you do that, I'll create a uh, extension for you with some details here. Let's see what happened. Okay. So here you see the Docker is created. This is the web client URL that I can use to access it. And uh, now if I have to check certain settings, I can do it from here. So let me quickly open that in, in window. Okay, here I am. I'll use the same username password that I use while creating the Docker container. Okay. Now, what I'll get out of this is a Business Central 19 Docker container for all my upcoming videos of what's changed in Business Central 19. This is a Kronos USA database, uh, demo database, and I'm pretty sure if I go into my help and support, I should be able to see that this is Central 90. So this is how you can quickly create your Docker container. And as I was talking about images, if you would have saved images, you can see by writing Docker images, it will give you a list of images that you have. For me, I have a DC190 uh, image, DC184 image, and then there is the baseline. There are two baseline. I might have to delete one of those eventually. Okay, so that's it about how you create a Docker container for Business Central 19. Stay tuned. Um, you know, subscribe to this channel. Keep an eye on this playlist where this video gets added, and I'll start posting some videos from tomorrow. Have a great day, and see you tomorrow.